Hello everybody, my name is Don and I am the owner of frogwallets.com. So what I'd like to do in this video is just tell you a little bit about myself and a little bit about the company. And what I'd like to do is help people who may be interested in starting their own business in the crypto market, as well as let the customers know a little bit about myself. I do think it's important to understand the person behind the company. So with that, I'll just give you a quick elevator pitch about myself. I believe in personal sovereignty. I think that's very important. I believe that uh, everybody has the right to make their own decisions, even if that leads to a screw up. I believe in helping others, but I also understand there's a difference uh, between helping someone nonstop and basically being taken advantage of. I also believe in teamwork and I believe in humanity as a whole and what we can do collectively. So a little bit more about me. I started my first business in my 20s and what that was, I sold PC games online. Originally, I started uh, selling on eBay and then I made my own website to get out, off that platform. And so in that time, what I did is I learned how to code websites, HTML, PHP, JavaScript, just because I couldn't afford to pay someone else to do it. And then I learned how to interact with those databases. So what ended up with happening with that company is I ultimately lost everything to, uh, I would say what put the nail in the coffin was a rash of stolen credit card purchases being used. So from there, I went to work for a very large U.S. manufacturer, and at the time, it was a private company, and I became the sole web IT guy, and I built multiple websites for that company. Now, to this day, I still, actually, this was 15 years ago, I still do contract work for that company. Uh, though I'm not technically employed, many of the systems that I put in place, I am still the guy that manages them. So let's move on to cryptocurrency. My uh, first purchase with cryptocurrency was back in 2019. And I really believe in what cryptocurrency represents, the decentralized privacy of all of that. Now the driving force, what really got me to pull the trigger was I spent a lot of time in the precious metal sector, uh, silver and gold. And those kind of folks are just also interested in cryptocurrency. So I pulled the trigger back then and uh, most of it was just to put some skin in the game and uh, here we are today. So let me talk about precious metals real quick. What that really, what that means to me, it really harkens back to the idea of personal sovereignty. So a chunk of gold, a chunk of silver sitting in my hand, it's mine. It's not sitting in a vault somewhere. It's not a number in a bank account. It's not getting tracked when I spend or earn profits. It simply is a piece of metal that I have in my own hand. I love that. The other great thing about precious metals is if I needed money, there would be somebody with the mindset just like me who if I offered a fair deal, they would take it. So it was really just a natural outgrowth, a natural fit for me to find my way into the crypto space. Decentralized private chains outside of the purview of the system just makes absolute sense to me. So just like putting a chunk of silver in your hand, I wanted to have my cryptocurrencies, my bag of crypto in my own hands. And this is really what led to the invention of the first frog wallet. It was just for me. So when I started looking at what was available and how the industry works as a whole, uh, quite frankly, I was disgusted. Uh, generally speaking, people are buying cryptocurrency and just leaving it on the exchange. They're not doing what they should be doing, which is using the cryptocurrency. And again, this is my opinion as a means of exchange between two private parties. Now, if you listen to anybody with half a brain in the crypto world, they're going to say something like, not your keys, not your coins, which is basically telling you to get your cryptos off the exchanges. So my crypto journey started with figuring out how do I do that? So to keep things short, I'm not gonna go over the pros and cons of the options that you have available. I'll just simply tell you what they are. Hardware wallets, software wallets, and paper wallets. Those are your choices. 
So when I looked at all the choices that I had available, I realized the one that I felt most comfortable with was paper wallets. Only if I could tackle some of the potential risks that are involved with paper wallets. Those things being, what if my paper wallet gets wet? We've got things like waterproofing. What if my house catches on fire? Well, they got to be fireproof. How do I know if someone tampers with my wallet? We've got things like security seals. And finally, if I pass away, would my next akin know what to do with what I wrote down in my paper wallet? Those are the questions I had, and that's what a frog wallet fixes. Simply put, the frog wallet and the fire wallet tackle all those issues to the best of anybody's ability. So there's a lot of information here on the frog wallet channel, so I'm not going to rehash how everything works in this video. But if you have questions about any of that stuff, you can always shoot us an email at frog underscore services at frogwallets.com, and we'll get right back to you. Now, earlier I mentioned that I do like to help others, and I think that is a very important uh, thing for one's personal growth. And that's exactly why I made my original invention, which was originally just a personal you know, way of storing my own crypto. That is why I decided to talk with other cryptocurrency folks that I knew, friends and family, and frogwallets.com was born. All the products that are on the site, the, the stock is accurate. So if you order something, it, if it says it's in stock, it's in stock. It'll be shipped out to you. But man, this has been a crazy journey um, and a learning experience because so much stuff has changed with when I built my original website 20 years ago. Now, I will say, despite what it looks like to me, that everybody is talking about cryptocurrency and it's going mainstream and all that. Now, that could just be the fact that that's what I pay attention to, but that is the world that I live in. It really does look like cryptocurrency is becoming mainstream. But the fact is, every single tech company is way, way behind the times when it comes to this uh, terminology. Now, this can sound like I'm getting ready to go into a poor me, sorry about my luck type story. And that's not what I'm trying to do at all. Rather, what I'm trying to do is try to help others who are thinking about starting a cryptocurrency company, give you some ideas and let you know what I've run up against. And hopefully that will help you. So when we talk about big tech and the differences between 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago, when I started my first website, and what is going on now, big tech has a huge, huge stranglehold on marketing, bar none, between Google AdWords, YouTube videos, Reddit, Facebook, Twitter advertisements, you know, where people actually talk about crypto. You need an act of God to advertise anything related to crypto there. Not to mention the potential for censorship that happens on search engines. We're not going to get into that, but so far, Google, Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, all have denied or allowed and then subsequently suspended any type of advertisement. I tried to run with them. There was one beacon of hope, and that was Amazon, crazy enough. They actually allowed me to accept payments and list my products on their website only after I jumped through just a crazy amount of hoops to get uh, everything done. And then after a couple months, they suspended our account for selling financial services. If you know what I'm talking about with the frog wallet, it is simply a blank paper wallet. It has no monetary value until uh, the end user actually puts their cryptocurrency on it. So there is no financial element at all to it. So while the system doesn't mind you creating new products or playing in the big boy sandbox, the system itself is designed in a way that the little guys with good ideas simply cannot succeed, or at least not with them. But when it really comes down to it, I really don't care about these mega corporations anyway. I never want to give them any money, but I also want to get the word out because I believe that a frog wallet can save your ass. So this kind of turned into a uh, interesting catch-22 type situation here. And at this point, it's like you've got two options. You can give up or you can find another way. And I've chosen to find another way. So what I've been doing is I've been reaching out to companies 
uh, or I'm sorry, people, not companies, who share the same mindset, like people that are going to say things like, not your keys, not your coins, people that I really feel like they're also trying to help others. Now, of course, reaching out to individual people does present its own set of challenges, and I'd like to go over those with you in case you find yourself in the same situation. Many of these creators are also dealing with censorship themselves. So, you know, when you come to them with a product that is going to trigger those keywords, eh, they're going to have a problem trying to talk about it. Additionally, if you're a new company like Frog Wallets is, and you approach these folks, you know, the mind will generally say, well, gee, I've never heard of that before, so I'm not interested. And so really what is happening is a lot of these folks who have built their brand, they've been through all this stuff, getting um, a unknown person or channel built up. They really don't want to risk themselves with an unknown variable like a new company. This means if they're actually interested, they're going to have to do some research about your product and your company and make an informed decision. Now, if you're a little guy making YouTube videos and you've got somewhat of a following, uh, that takes a lot of time. And that time is one of the things that is not usually on your side when you're flying solo like that. So from my experience, when you get up to around 15, 20,000 YouTube subscribers or whatever channel you're working on, on these various platforms, all of these folks have one thing in common is they just simply do not have enough time to read all the comments on their videos and all the emails that they're going to get. But I do have some advice to those that are interested in the crypto space. You can do what I'm going to do, and that is you got to keep trying. So I sent out some frog wallet kits to some of the channels that I follow, and I had, you know, some success with that. And I also feel like that you just got to you just got to keep putting it out there and eventually, eventually if your product is good, your service is good, people will realize that. And uh, so what I do just about every day, I, I check Reddit or Twitter. And, you know, every day I find, maybe not every day, but more times than not, I'll find somebody posting a story about how they lost their crypto. And I'm simply reminded at this point exactly why frog wallets exist. So the last thing I'd like to talk about before I close here is... When I run across these posts on Reddit or Twitter and I try to interact with these people that have lost their crypto, house fires, flooding, those kind of things, when I mention a frog wallet, it's almost like rubbing salt into the wound. Of course, that's not my goal. I'm simply trying to help others who may find that post or that tweet and let them know before it's too late that, hey, there is an option. And it's really quite interesting when you think about the system that we're in that the powers that were have built, um, when you have a good idea and a good product, but really no good way to tell anybody about it. So appeal to creators and uh, you just become another email in their inbox that they're probably not going to read. You try to point people who've had disasters happen to them and uh, you get downvoted and ignored. <laughs> it's really quite an interesting system. In the end, though, I, I think some solid advice is if you do believe in your product uh, and what you created, you kind of got to go through these trials of fire. Do you have what it takes? Do you have enough uh, stamina to stand up to the system? Uh, because up until the system changes, it's always going to be like this. And that is what crypto is really all about. It's trying to change the system. So keep on. Give thanks for what you have. Our time is going to come, and when we rebuild this dumpster fire that uh, is the current system, you know what? We're going to have the knowledge of what not to do, and we're going to put things back together the correct way. So until next time, this is Don with Frog Wallets, frogwallets.com, saying be well.